one full year, Robert Cull lived all by himself in Patagonia, all by himself. What was it like just being out there with no other people for a full year? It depended on the day. Some days it was wonderful and I felt woven into the universe and other days I felt incredibly vulnerable in the face of a malevolent universe and isolated and, and so there were these incredible cycles of experience. Robert Cull has written Solitude, Seeking uh, Wisdom in Extremes. It's, it's a great opportunity for anybody who doesn't want to take a year off and go to Patagonia to get a feel for what it would be like, okay? Uh, so for starters, what were you expecting to find there? In, in literal, no human contact for a year. I was gonna get enlightened. Mm -hmm. I went to get enlightened. Yeah. I went to find the ultimate answer for my life and then come back and share it with us. Great, share it with us. I didn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there is an ultimate answer. Yeah. You know, my sense is, is that life is its own answer and, and we live it. And if there's something called enlightenment, it's not something we can get, but the process is abandoning ourselves to the universe and, and to the process of our own lives. Okay, so how did it change? It has to have changed you. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure if I gained any wisdom or if I just got the crap kicked out of me. By, <laughs> I'm mellower than I was, but I might have just had it beaten out of me by the, by the extreme experience itself. It was, it was what difficult. What elements of the, extreme, of the extreme experience? I mean, you talk about just things like the, things as mundane as the weather? or The weather, it, it wasn't mundane, though. The weather was an enormous challenge. It's one of the windiest places yeah, on that's Earth. That's way far south. Way far south. And so the ocean froze sometimes, and huge rainstorms, unexpected rainstorms would come battering me. And I was at the mercy because all my firewood was coming in by boat and I was going out fishing and exploring by boat. So there was this sense of being, you know, vulnerable to the winds. And then there was the inner exploration of, of coming to, to face aspects of myself that I didn't especially like. Solitude is a powerful catalyst and an opportunity to explore deeply within and that can be a challenging process. I would think that would be the scariest thing is because you're actually not alone. There's one other person with you and it's you. Yeah. And that's a long time to spend with somebody one-on-one <laughs> -on -one, as it were. Well, there's the whole universe with you, around and within you. Yeah. You know? And so there's this, this sense of, it's very, it's quite interesting this feeling of going from a, a sense of total isolation cut off from ourselves and and then to feeling completely woven in and, and trying to understand well what just happened here and then working to control that shift and finally surrendering to the, these inner rhythms is in the same way I have to surrender to the storm were there moments of despair where you thought I'm not gonna do that I give up I can't do this I'm pretty stubborn there were lots of moments when I didn't want to be there but I've been through enough things in my life that I knew in those moments that wherever I was when I feel that way I wouldn't want to be there either so there's no point in going somewhere else but sink into that feeling and, and really explore all those different feelings and in that process of, of instead of avoiding or, or fighting against but just allow ourselves to sink down deeply those those experiences open out and they can become transformative and actually link us to the world okay so um, I, I understand the concept of solitude, you know, obviously as I mentioned you know the Buddha did it and Henry David Thoreau did it but you know a lot of us just a year in Patagonia is more than we can handle right away. Are there short are there short versions of this that help us accomplish the same thing? Sure, and I think we all do short versions of it at different times during the day. For me, meditation is an important part of my daily routine, is just to disengage for a period every day and settle down into myself. And we can all do that. Um, we can go walking on the beach. So I don't recommend the year in wilderness solitude for people because I don't think it's, it's risky and yeah. it's, it's difficult, but I think spending some time with ourselves each day is valuable. Let me tell folks where they can uh, see you and meet you. Uh, Robert is going to be making an appearance today, 4 p.m. at Book Passage in Corte Madera. For information, you can go to bookpassage.com. <clears throat> it is an interesting read, a very enlightening read. One last que two questions. One, were you lonely? Sometimes. And two, who shot the video that we were looking at? At the end of the year, okay. uh, my friend Patty came to spend a month with me and helped me through the transition. And as a surprise, she brought the video camera. Okay. It was pretty funny. She thought when she was coming in, she talked to herself. She said, this guy's been alone for a year. I have to be really mellow with him. And from the moment she arrived, I didn't shut up. I just had so much to tell her. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us. It was us. a pleasure. By the way, he was there when 9-11 when, uh, happened, yeah. came back, it, had, it was a fait accompli, quite an experience. Thank you very much for joining us, we've gotta go.